All right, everybody, how you guys doing? Again, it's um, lunchtime or a little bit after lunchtime. I apologize about that. You know how it is sometimes when you have um, a live show, things don't always go um, as planned, but we get it done and we still come to you either way. All right, um, so today we actually have a couple of guests here with us um, and we're gonna bring them in in just a moment. We're gonna talk about success, um, the different phases and the different faces of success because um, one of the things is people always um, want to be successful or always um, have a different idea of what they think success is and we don't realize how that also plays a part on what we think failure is. So anyhow, we're going to talk about different things and, um, and you know, as always, we have that open conversation where you are encouraged to send emails or, or not emails, or sorry, text messages or join the chat. All right. We'll be back with you in just two minutes. Don't go away. So we are back. Um, as always, you know, we try to bring you guys the best of information. We try to bring you everything that um, that's relevant. Um, so today we have a couple of people in here. We have, um, I'm going to bring Jackie in first. Hey, Jackie, how are you? I'm great. I'm great. Thank you for having me on the show. Thank you for being on the show. And thank you for putting up with, um, with you know, the issues that I was having beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> I call it the Tangled Tech tango and you dance with it very well steve <laughs> the audience don't realize the issues that we have um before the show they just see the um you know the show and then they're like oh wow you know we just make it look easy you know <laughs> <laughs> you so do a great us, job of that steve thanks tell us a little bit about yourself about um you know about you and your organization and and um and then we're gonna go on to our second guest awesome well, you know, I'm, and actually your guests don't know. So I'm Jackie Simmons. I'm the founder of Success Journey Academy and the co-founder of the Teen Suicide Prevention Society. And those two organizations are on a mission to make suicide, especially teen suicide, a thing of the past. We do that by helping people become better advocates for themselves, so they can be better advocates for their friends, their family, their businesses, and their tribes. And success is always on our minds. When you feel successful, when you're in that attitude of gratitude that comes with true success, I don't ever have to worry about you needing to talk yourself off a ledge because you won't go near a ledge. But when you're not feeling successful, when you're not easily in an attitude of gratitude, then having the skills of self-advocacy will keep you from the ledge. We know this is true, and advocates positively impact a minimum of 20 people, even while they're students. So we're out to change the world one advocate at a time. All right. Um, and, um, and our next guest, um, the one that I'm going to bring on now is Nunso. In, um, one second. Nunso, how are you? Hey, Steve, I'm great. Thanks. It's really a pleasure uh, being on your show today. No, I can't pronounce your last name, so you're going to have to help me with the last name. <laughs> <laughs> Just say Opala. 
that would be nice. Opala, okay. Um, all right, great. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, uh, I'm originally from Nigeria uh, in West Africa. I came to the U.S. Uh, a little bit over uh, 13 years ago. I went to Grambling State University, uh, the Tigers. That's where I obtained my, uh, my college degree and then went on to get my master's. Ultimately, I came back and became an accounting professor at my, uh, my alma mater for about six years. So that opportunity really gave me a lot of exposure to understand the plight, the struggles of uh, a lot of uh, young African-American kids, uh, male, female. You know, sometimes uh, we think that these kids are not really serious about their education sometimes, but I believe that if you give them the necessary support, they will do great. And that's what I've come to realize. And um, th those experiences, being of course a certified a public accountant, CPA, now working in a financial institution, so I moved away from academia into corporate America. All of that experience really helped me to kind of see life for what it is. And I, I put all of that energy, all the experience into uh, writing my brand new book that I published um, about a week ago, Prepare Now. 10 practical guides uh, to surviving and thriving during crisis. So uh, I, in the book, of course, I talk about some of the um, crises that, that face a lot of people and why you should prepare ahead of time. So again, I'm really excited to be here. That's a little bit about myself and uh, I look forward to contributing and sharing with your audience uh, a few things that I have done and things that I'm currently doing. All right. Awesome. Awesome. So one of the things that um, that I noticed both of you touched on was um, the success. And that was one of the things that we want to talk about today. Um, now, a lot of people um, use the word success, but do people really know what what level um, they what level they consider successful? I mean, what's successful to one person? Maybe a car, a house, and um, and two kids, and a wife and two kids. Another person maybe you know the bachelor pad, um, you know, whatever. So, um, what exactly is the definition of success? Um, Jackie, I'll go with you first. Well, you're right. I think success is a very personal experience. And we put things in our way. A very wealthy man said that success, and he had this whole list for him to feel successful. And another young man in the same course defined success as any day above ground. He was successful by definition. So I'm somewhere in the middle of that. For me right now, success is having the people on the show. And we're picking up some background noise, Steve. I'm not sure where it's coming from. Um, just FYI. So yeah, I too, but I don't know where it's coming from. Okay, so it's just something moving around, but it's uh, there. We go. The microphone and mute everyone until we figure out which one it is. I think it's none. So I just muted him, and um, and the noise went go. away. Cool. <laughs> All right. Last year, I defined success as filling my programs, helping entrepreneurial women sell themselves on themselves, doing sales from the inside out. That's what Success Journey Academy was built on. What I define success as today, my vision of suicide being a thing in the past, and my mission is to train 100,000 advocates this year. So success is every day that I get to do one thing to help someone choose to make it a great day. When they make that choice, they're moving a little further. They've got a little bit of a bigger buffer between them and the ledge. And we all need a big buffer these days because we just do. So this is success for me. Being on your show, I'm completely successful, totally happy. Thank you. <laughs> That's awesome. I, I like that. I like that. <laughs> hey, okay. So let's go ahead and bring that. So, not so, um, the, um, so what do you define success as? Well, really for me, uh, success is nothing but purpose. You know what I mean? Really? That's, that's how mm -hmm. I think of success. When you walk in your purpose, Wait, what are so, you here for? Wait, not so there's a noise in your background. Um, I'm not sure. If maybe it's wind or something, but there, it's a, like a little, almost sounds like a tap noise. Can Can you hear me now? 
We can hear you, but that tap of, that noise, um, you know, it's a noise, it's a tapping noise, or I don't even know how to describe it. It's not even like a tap. I don't know how to describe it. If I mute you, it goes away, so I know it's in your background. Do me a favor. I'm gonna drop. I'm gonna drop you from the um the thing. Just go ahead and join back in, okay? Okay, sure. All right. Sorry about that. No problem. Go ahead. If he's wearing a lapel mic, it might be that it's bumping a button. I was looking at that, but I didn't see him. Um, uh, um, the mic, but um, but yeah, um, or if he was wearing a headset like this, but no, that's not it either. I don't know what what it was, but um, so Jackie, so tell us um a little bit about the suicide, um, you know, about that organization and and let's well, let's start with you telling me a little bit about that. What made you start the organization? When I do my full bio, at the very end of it, I have a tagline now that says I'm also the mother of a teen suicide attempt survivor. It was not something I ever talked about. For 20 mm -hmm. years, my daughter and I didn't talk about it. I mean, we lived through it. Mm -hmm. And one day last summer, my daughter broke the silence. And if she had broken the silence anyway, other than the way she did, I probably could have found a way to ignore it but she wanted to write a chapter for an inspirational book for teens and she had writer's block. So she was going to a public speaking event to participate, thought she would just speak her story and then get it transcribed for the book. And it seemed like a good idea. I welcomed her to the front of the room, super proud of her because she volunteered to go first. And it was my event and I had no clue what she was gonna talk about. She started with the statistic of 3,000 a day. And a startling statistic is always a good thing to start a short talk with, but 3,000 a day was the number of teens who attempt to take their own lives every day in the US. And I had no clue the number was that large. Before I could recover from the statistic, she started a sentence with when I was 14. And she started sharing about her multiple suicide attempts as a teenager. She was now 37 and we hadn't talked about it in over 20 years. And I'm going, what? And then she said she still struggles with suicidal thoughts. She manages to find joy every day, but she still struggles with suicidal thoughts. And I was in the back of the room with my brain just exploding. How could I have missed this again? And when she ended her talk with the fact that she wanted to create a program to help teens find joy every day, to learn the coping skills that she's learned along the way before they need them, I felt like I'd been saved. And it was out of that one seven minute talk that the book got turned into a book to help teens break the silence on suicide. It's called Make It a Great Day, The Choice is Yours. We got mm -hmm. this book published in weeks. Over 20 of my friends got together and wrote amazing, real, relatable, relatable, and sometimes raw stories in this book. And it's on Amazon. People can find it or they can go to makeitagreatdaybook.com. That journey happened so fast. And here we are less than a year later, the Teen Suicide Prevention Society is a thing. The advocate training program impacts each student positively impacts at least 20 people while they're a student. And then as a card carrying advocate, they go on and impact even more. And so that's what we're about in the goal. And you asked, how did this get started? It got started because something I didn't want to talk about became what I talk about. I call it the day that my purpose tapped me on my shoulder. And so that's how I got started, Steve. That's that's a powerful story, and um, and wow, and I'm glad that um that you guys are helping um other kids so that other parents don't have to go through this because I mean we see it every day in the news. We um we turn on TV and we see so many um so many kids that are taking their lives for things that we might think um you know well they'll get over it and really honestly truly and I, I say it all the time. To us, it may it may seem like nothing to but, but to that child, it's the world, and you know, the issue's um, not I, the kids though. The issue is not the kids. The issue mm -hmm. is the parents who do not have a clue 
That's all it is. The problem is, is that parents don't have a clue that their child is on the edge, standing on the ledge, because the kids can't articulate it. We've lost the art of conversation, especially around a dinner table, multi-generational conversations. We've lost the art of conversation within our families. And so that's the focus of the advocate training program. We teach a simple six step conversation that will break the silence on suicide. And once you have that conversation, trust me, any other conversation you want to have in your life is easier. Mm. And, you know, and, um, and, you know, and that's, that's something because um, we don't have the dinner around the dinner table like we used to before. Um, now I'm going to bring in another guest that, um, that just joined us. Um, and um, and this is Nicole. Hey, Nicole. Hi. Good afternoon. Hi, Jackie. Hi, Steve. Nice to meet you. And, um, we also have Nunso. Nunso came back. It's <laughs> um, happened to tip, um, the noise in your background, though, Nunso. So whenever you're not speaking, I'm just going to mute you so the noise will go away. Um, but um, but um, Nicole, you were just hearing Jackie's story, and um, and you do a lot with kids as well. You have um, a, a school, you have an organization where you do a lot with children. Um, do you see um, the the depression, or do you see things like that with the children? And um, how do you help to tackle these, these kind of things when you see them? Right, absolutely. Well, thank you for that, Steve. So I've always said the way to impact the child is to go through the actual family unit. And Jackie, I agree with you how, you know, now this generation, we're missing out on what was actually essential growing up, having those dinner talk tables. And nowadays we have so many distractions. You've got children that are watching things on TikTok and YouTube, uh, eating, uh, what is this, the, the, uh, the pods, the Tide pods, and doing a whole bunch of things for attention and just the filling up that belonging. And so what I've done with my teachers uh, prior to COVID, uh, we've, we've done a lot of personal and professional development. And one thing that I've always liked to highlight was the Maslow hierarchy of needs and looking and assessing each child and becoming very strategic on how are we fostering an environment to meet each and every last one of those um, you know, important milestones when it comes to fostering a good relationship with the child. All right, and Nunso, um, you uh, you you actually were talking to me earlier about the. Um, let me bring me in here too. <laughs> um, you were talking to me earlier about the um, about the the study that you um, you came across when you were writing your book about the correlation between um, suicide and um, people, actually suicide among um, minorities and the economy. And um, talk to me a little bit more about that. Absolutely, uh, Steve. Uh, if you think about this, um, most uh, minorities, uh, if they don't have that strong support system, say your parent, uh, maybe your father is already in jail, which is very common, unfortunately, among African Americans and some minorities. You don't have that support system. You don't have someone around. And then what happens when the, the crisis uh, strikes? You cannot find yourself in that state of despair, that state of hopelessness. And then you feel like the whole world has deserted you and you really don't have this sense of purpose. And then what happens? Most people end up uh, taking their own lives. Now, this is common, not even just young people, but also adults. And that's why it is very critical that people uh, prepare ahead of time because crisis is inevitable. It's just a matter of time. How are you preparing now uh, to ensure that when the strike, uh, crisis strikes, you have what it takes to survive it? I'm telling you, before someone, uh, as Jackie pointed, before someone gets to the point of considering taking his or, or her own life, the person must really see life as a hopeless thing. You know what I mean, and that's where it's, it, it has. Um, that's where the whole support system comes into play. You have the right people in place. Now, why again? Another aspect of it, of course, is finance. If you don't have the resources, let's say the recession strikes, your parent, you, as a father, let's say you're a single father, you lose your job. You get a parent or mortgage. 
you know, you have your own cars, you have to pay your car notes. And then what happens if they get repossessed or you get foreclosed? Where do you go to? You don't have, you're not able to support your own child. That kind of puts you in a state of hopelessness or despair to the point that you can even consider taking your own lives. So uh, there's no doubt, even among, uh, of course, not to make it a racial thing, but you can say this is just research after research and data. People of African descent, like African Americans and some minority groups, tend to lack financially or economically. And when you don't have that support to even take care of your own family, then what do you do when you find yourself in a bad situation? So this is something that we need to call out. Uh, we need to continue to have this conversation of rates and also economic empowerment. People, yes, jobs are good, but we need to equip more people of um, uh, minorities to consider having their own businesses to consider empowering them economically, as opposed to maybe just relying on jobs because when the jobs go away then you have no you don't, you don't have any strong backing in the book prepare now i talk about not just having uh, some kind of business but being able to save being able to manage your debt very well being able to uh, resize being able to have some kind of um uh, passive income let's say your main source of income dries up you can still leverage on something these are things that most uh, we need to put in place to help people overcome the crisis that come with recession and right now we are actually um going well and i mean i'm um i am by no means a financial genius or anything like that and <laughs> and i'm not and i'm not um you know trying to tell the future financially or anything but i feel like we're going to go into a, um to a recession because we already see the unemployment very high we already see these things and like you're saying there's a lot that we need to do in order to um in order to to prepare um for for what for what's happening um like for example if, if we see that our job is not one of those essential jobs odds are when the time comes you know it, it's not gonna you're not gonna be there let's just put it to you that way i'll be straightforward yesterday i had broward college on here and they were talking about um a lot of the classes that they have in order to help people that are um that are trying to reinvent themselves now because of um you know working from home and all different things so uh, so i say that to say i agree with you if a person is not if a person doesn't have the resources or doesn't have um a job or their job cuts the hours or whatever as a man, we're going to feel like less of less than a man because now we're not providing for our family. So to say that, um, I just want to let people know that there are things out there you can do. You can go back to school. You can get a certificate. You can learn a different trade. And there are a lot of programs out there. So just to let people know, please take advantage of these things because we don't want to wait until um, until a recession hits or until the economy drops, um, you know, well, worse than it is now. And then we turn around and say, well, I wish I knew people. We see the writings on the wall. Let's do this. We have three people on here that are telling us about how these things affect us. We may not realize it. And um, and, you know, um, I remember years ago hearing um, the story, you know, and um, um, and they were talking about um, depression and how people don't realize that when they're depressed or when they're getting in depression. And the person that was doing it, that was um, doing the workshop was talking about um, if you were cooking crabs or lobster or anything like that, you put them in the water, you turn up the heat and then it gradually gets hot and you don't realize it. They don't realize that they're being cooked. Same thing. Sometimes we don't realize that we're depressed, you know? Um, so we have to, we have to look at our, our story, look at our lives, start hearing what our friends are saying, and don't be afraid to talk to your friends, people. You know, if your friend is doing something a little bit crazy, like what's her name, Tiffany Haddish, that just want to cut all her hair off, and sometimes that's a cry for help. <laughs> I mean, seriously, it is, you know, so guys, you know. So um, I'm going to go back to you for a second, Jackie. So what what would you do? Let's say, um, okay, so how are people supposed to handle that? Like I just said with um, Tiffany Haddish, that she just went and just said, um, you know, she's going to shave her head bald. Um, how do you recognize when it's a cry for help than when it's just uh, a fashion statement? You don't have to. You don't have to. What you need to do, though, is start the conversation mm -hmm. and you just ask. 
And we, and I have hierarchies, you know, if some, if you think someone's at risk, you don't hesitate. You call the national suicide prevention hotline with them. Why? Because it is easier to talk to a stranger than it is to talk to someone who might know the possible players in your pain. It's true mm -hmm. for adults. It's true for teens. So I've got that number. I'm going to put it in the chat. The second level is if you think someone is just down and they're not sure, the Why Not Workbook is up on the internet. It's completely free. You just walk them through that conversation. Super simple. And it explains how people get caught up in the negative thinking echo chamber. The third level is always get to know, like, and trust yourself. The best way to help someone else is to be so full of love for yourself that you resonate and it becomes contagious. This is the counter epidemic. And so that's available and it's free. There's a no like, and trust factor assessment. And I'll put that in the chat as well for you, Steve. We'd provide all of these free resources because we know that we're all somewhere on this spectrum. We may not all need intervention. We may not know whether we're worried or suffering from anxiety. We may not know if we're just feeling down or if we're dealing with depression. And there's a free assessment tool for that. <laughs> Emotional elephants is what it's called. And so all of these links will be in the chat for the people that you were talking to, Steve. The value of this conversation cannot be underestimated. Don't wait till there's an obvious sign is the first rule. Be an advocate and, for everyone. And um, and I'm putting up um, a, a screen that we have here too, because on my website on lunchtimetalkwithsteve.com, I have the suicide prevention, the link directly to the website. You guys can, you definitely can um, can reach out to them. I have so many different links under the get help section, um, missing, ex missing and exploited children so that, um, and it's adults as well too, because there are a lot of people that are missing and we don't realize it, you know? Um, and sometimes it could be something that's, um, that's depression um, related where people just walk away from home or whatever. Um, you know, um, we have Feed in America and these are all national organizations, 211. If you need help with your rent, your light, whatever, they're right here on the get help section. So people definitely take advantage of the resources that are available to you. Um, so Nicole, what other things do you see um, that, because one of the things we were talking about before you came on was success and how people measure success. Now, um, what are some of the levels of um, success and how do we correlate those those levels of success to failure when people don't reach it? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure so, if I'm getting yeah. <laughs> So the way I, I would measure levels of success, and I'm working with a client now, and I, I shared with her, I said, I'd rather you feel good than to look good. Okay. Mm. So when you can feel great, everything else falls into place. You're able to think better. You're able to have conversations with others in a way that is, you know, um, meaningful and fulfilling. Your purpose of life is just heightened. Just even if it's raining outside, it doesn't even seem to bother you so much. So I think that also we should be very intentional about what goes into our bodies just how we're intentional about how we take care of the plants and how we care for our cars and our homes and things of that nature. We should look at our bodies in that same way. And one thing that I love so much about education is that it helps us uh, become in a position to think critically. So for instance, depression, and from what I've studied, um, you know, having my own recent um, episodes of it with working with children, you know, during this quarantine, and it has not been easy at all. And of course, you know, as a caregiver and as a mentor and as a mother, a community leader, you know, a person to look up to when you really care about these people, you know, life can just go in so many different ways for children that are in different households. And one thing that I did share with my client, I said, you know, we've got to be intentional about what we put in our bodies. So how much water are you drinking? How much potassium, B12? What is your iron? Those kind of things make a significant impact on how we view situations and how we're able to navigate our way through life and through changes. But then I also think too, it's also a way of understanding who we are as people. 
And so prior to COVID, my team and I, we did our disc assessment and it was amazing. We were able to see, you know, how do we respond when we're under stress or what are some great takeaways to do to, you know, have a better outcome on expressing our emotions and being understood and actually having meaningful relationships with people. So I will always say that education is number one. And during this quarantine as well, uh, there's so much opportunity, so much time to relearn and learn the things that we have not had a chance to necessarily come across because of our busy lives and other priorities that have been in the forefront. So that is my takeaway when it comes to measuring success. I would always say your success is measured by how you feel, not necessarily what's on the outside, because sometimes perception is not always the reality of things as well. So those are my takeaways. All right. So let me, um, I, I need to run a quick commercial break and we will be back in two minutes to finish talk, um, talk to our guests. Okay. Give us just two minutes. Let me tell you about CCTV RX. With over 30 years in the security industry here in South Florida, they have proven themselves to be the first choice when it comes to security professionals. So whether you're trying to secure your home or your business, there's no other choice. Give them a call today for a free estimate. 754-213-2820. If your car could talk, it would say call Curvin's Car Detailing Service. It's mobile and they can come to you no matter where you are in Broward County. Give Curvin a call, 954-549-8507 and tell them that Steve sent you. Take me there. I want some real good food to eat. I want shucking it down. Check it in time and catch your food with an old school groove. Our design is to get your taste palette back in line. Baby, follow us at We Shop. All right, so we are back. Um, <laughs> which one of it, which one of you guys is it that lived in um in Louisiana? Did one of you live in um in down in the south before? Wait, hold on. I think I um there you go. All right, so, uh, I lived in Louisiana for about, uh, for about 12, 11, 12 years before I moved up to the East Coast. So you're you're familiar with them with that food right there. <laughs> oh, yeah, I better believe it. Oh, come on now. <laughs> yeah. Yes, they're down, they're down in, um, in Miami. So, you know, that's um, that's like, you know, bringing um, some of the... And what's so crazy is because even though Florida is south of Louisiana. We still consider Louisiana the deep south. It's like it, it, we don't say uh, uh, it's up north. It's 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 the deep south. It's like it's crazy. But anyhow, so that's bringing some of that deep south cooking down to Miami, you know. Um, and the food is great. So you guys go out and check it out. You know, all the um, the people that um, that advertise on the show, they're awesome. Check them out and and um, you know support them because they support me. They help they help me to bring this to you guys for free. Um, so anyhow, so none. So tell me a little bit more about your book. Absolutely. So uh, this is my book, um, uh, Prepare Now, uh, 10 Practical Guides to Surviving and Thriving During Crisis. Now, uh, around, around uh, November, maybe December of 2019, as we started hearing the rumors about potential uh, recession, uh, I started thinking about this, of course, as a CPA and as a finance professional, I uh, understand that usually finance gets hit the most whenever uh, you experience a recession. So I started thinking, look, I need to do something. At least I need to 
tell people to prepare ahead of time. And then uh, I started writing this book in January of 2020. And this was before the COVID, mind you. And I started writing the book. I began to say, look, I think this is really a great time to share the message, to prepare. Now, preparation, I believe, is key to overcoming. Uh, in the book, I, I shared about 10 different guide, practical guides you can follow to help you really overcome when the crisis hit, because it will come. And I kind of deviated a little bit, not necessarily financial crisis per se, but any type of crisis, marriage struggle, let's say. Um... Uh-oh, we lost you. We lost your sound. Nonsense. Yeah, we lost, we lost the sound, Nanzo. All right. Can you hear um, me now? Now we can, yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that, yeah. Technology sometimes no, no it does. But anyway, so the Go ahead. So in the book, I talked I talked about the concept of personal recession. So personal recession kind of goes before behind, uh, beyond what we know as recession. Uh you can be going through a health crisis. That is personal recession. Marriage struggles, finances. That is personal recession. So, for example, I believe that having a support, a strong support system is key to surviving any of the crises that you experience. So in the book, I talked about various chapters, how you can actually apply them now to help you overcome or help you survive or help you thrive even when recession hits. For example, being, your own, being a business owner, I think, Steve, you pointed this earlier. Uh, if you are working in a certain type of job that gets affected uh, the most whenever we go through a recession, you have a high risk of losing your job. However, if you have some kind of personal uh, business that you can probably juggle with your uh, job or anything of that nature. And again, internet has opened a giant portal for people to do a lot of things. So we don't have any excuses. You don't have to have have a brick and mortar uh, building. Uh, we keep losing you. Sorry, we, can you hear me? We keep, we, we, we keep losing your sound. Um, I'm not sure. You said you're, where are you? No, I said I'm a personal blogger. Uh, right, so in addition, but, um, but but um, all right. So yeah, because we kept losing your sound, your sound was going in and out. Um, but uh, go ahead, um, your personal blogger, and go ahead. Yes, I am. So that's something that I do on the side. So I think people should consider that's one of the things you can do to help you when Christ financial crisis hit. But also consider having some kind of good savings. That's a problem. One of the as I was writing this book, uh, I came across a research that are close to seventy percent of Americans don't even have up to a thousand dollars in their savings account. Think about that. You know, you lose a job, you can't even have something to sustain you for a little while. So that's part of what this book is all about: helping people to prepare ahead of time because crisis will come. Have some kind of passive income. Invest in some kind of stock or bond, something that can generate a constant flow of income for you. Be sure to invest in your health. I think, um, um, no, Jack, I think you, maybe Jack or the other, I can't see her now, Nicole. talked about yeah. the concept of health. Right. right. Invest in your health because when crisis hits, think about it. Oh, by the way, I wrote in the, in the book, I talked about a story of a gentleman who basically caught a heart attack during because he lost his job in a recession. Now the family is in turmoil. That's a crisis people face. Have some kind of support system. Invest in your health. Spend some time and make sure that you eat well, you exercise well. Start it now. Have a good support system. Make sure you have people you can lean to whenever you go through problems. You don't wait until crisis hit. I think Jackie mentioned that. You have to start now, build strong support network that if you find yourself in a very bad situation, you can lean on them. They can help you provide some kind of support and things of that nature. So that's exactly really what this book is all about. And of course, spirituality is another big part of it. 
not to promote religion of anything of that nature, but research suggests that people who have this strong spiritual backing tend to manage crisis a little bit better. All right. And um, Jackie, um, so talk to us a little bit more then about um, and if there's anything that you can um, that you can, you know, expand on from from what Nelson was talking about, um, that would be good, too. But, but talk to us a little bit more about um, your book and about, um, you know, some of the things that you're um, that you're doing. You touched on the book earlier, but um, let's go a little deeper into it real quick. Yeah. Yeah, so the book for the mission is Make It a Great Day, which is no. as a statement of empowerment. When you go with Make It a Great Day, mm -hmm. when you say Have It a Great Day, it's a very different energy. Have a nice day, it's a very different energy. Also, when you make it a great day, you're acknowledging they have the power to do that for themselves. Mm. And so we love that title. And when people look for me on Amazon, they're going to find that I've written a few books and that I'm co-authored and many more. When you have something so important that it's literally talking about it can be said, but the first thing that needs to be said is simply, hey, people, everyone is at risk. There are six suicide risk indicators beyond a mental health condition. And by the time I list all six, I will guarantee you or your family have at least three of the six. So just assume that everyone is at risk and for no other reason than because we all know someone. And the Center for Disease Control says that one of the risk indicators of suicide is if you know someone who's tried or died. So we all know someone. I mean, thanks to media, even if you didn't have any relationship with Elvis's grandson who recently took his own life, you probably know a celebrity chef a talented singer or a gifted comedian because we all know someone we've all been impacted. And so as soon as you accept that, then you can break the silence on the topic with people. There's a six step conversation that we highly recommend because it creates safety around the conversation. And Steve, believe it or not, the first step is simply be willing to stop being busy. Be willing mm. to stop being busy long enough to have a conversation that truly matters. And the second step is simply to listen. Open the conversation with an open-ended question. What's up? What's news? What's the best thing that's happened to you so far today? Just start the conversation and listen to whatever they want to talk about. The third step is simply to introduce the topic. And you do that by asking, have you heard about the rising rate of suicide? And you can put among their age group, among their demographic, because all demographics, the numbers are going up. So have you heard about it? Then you ask, do you have a story? So that's the fourth step. Do you know someone who's tried or died? Do you have a friend who's tried or died? It's a neutral conversation, neutral language for a reason. I'm a brain retrainer. I'm also a mediator. Words matter. And in this conversation, verbatim counts. That's why we teach this in the advocate training course, the exact wording and how to do the conversation. Mm -hmm. The fifth step is where most people hesitate. And it's to ask the person you're talking to, have you ever thought of leaving that way? Well, Freud said suicidal thoughts are normal that any man who turns 30, his dad dies and he, or he loses his job is naturally going to have a suicidal thought. I believe it's part of our natural problem solving, the worst case scenario mechanism in the brain. It's not a problem unless you keep silent on it or you get stuck on it. I'll be you get stuck, you double down on that thought because you're trying not to think of it. I'll be honest with you and I mean, um, and, and I'm being straightforward, honest. I have never thought about it. And I'll tell you mm -hmm. why. Um, because I am a very scared person and I am afraid that um, I've seen so many videos and things that people have tried mm -hmm. and didn't die. And it's like, that would be the worst thing in the world because number one, the pain that you put yourself through. And then the second thing is now you're stuck with the family members and you yeah. have to explain to them why you tried. But you're actually I, answering the sixth question 
The sixth step in the conversation is, do you have reasons to stay? And I don't care if it's fear. That is one of your reasons. Why not take my life today? Why not kill myself today? I don't care if fear is what keeps you off the ledge. All we're about is helping make sure that you have ways to stay away from the ledge as far away as we can get you. That's the other thing. I'm scared of heights too, so I'm not going up on the ledge. <laughs> there you go. I'm not worried about you, Steve. And I just thank you so much for inviting me to come on the show, for helping people be aware that success does not make you suicide proof. Some of the most successful people in the world have taken their own lives. So yes. success doesn't guarantee anything. Your attitude does. Attitude adjustment. I've given all the tools I can give Steve, everything except the book or the training program are completely free and easily accessible to everyone. And, I can't and the, the links are right here. The links are right there in the, in the feed. So people um, go ahead and click on the link and go out and get the information because I mean, you literally can be saving a friend's life by knowing this information. Absolutely. Right. Thank you very much, Steve. I know you have another engagement you have to run to, Jackie, and I really appreciate you being on the show. I appreciate the information that you brought to the um to to my viewers. All right. Um, and definitely if you ever want to be on the show again, just reach out to me and let me know. Thank you, Steve. I'm sure that we'll be talking again soon. Nice to meet you, Nunzo and Nicole. Gotta run. Bye. All right, talk to you later. Bye-bye. None so. <laughs> um, so give me just a quick moment. I need to just run another commercial break and we'll be right back with you, okay? Sure, I'm here. Yeah. All right, one second. Let me tell you about CCTV RX. With over 30 years in the security industry here in South Florida, they have proven themselves to be the first choice when it comes to security professionals. So whether you're trying to secure your home or your business, there's no other choice. Give them a call today for a free estimate. 754-213-2820. If your car could talk, it would say call Curvin's Car Detailing Service. It's mobile and they can come to you no matter where you are in Broward County. All right, for some reason, it just cut the video. I don't know why, but let me just run the individual commercial. Then. Let me tell you about, about Baby, won't you take me there? I want some real good food to eat. I want shocking it down. designers to get your taste palette back in line baby follow us at we shop all right so we're back <laughs> um and um let me just go to some of the comments that we got on here um sharon was um was saying it was good advice great advice you know um and tico said good information uh, from all thank you for providing the info sharon again was saying um we have to assure and reassure the black community that it is definitely okay to seek uh, mental health counseling, and that's true. That um, that goes to another another thing too: the stigmas and the stereotypes of seeking out, um, you know, counseling. Uh, because one of the things that you were mentioning in the book was, uh, or you were mentioned earlier when you were researching the book, was when you started to see things like. Um, suicide in minority communities um, and, and how it's tied to to things like um, like the economy and all these other things that are outside of our control. So how would you, well, how would you reach out to someone then or what would you say to someone in order to, um, to reassure them um, that it's okay to go and get counseling? What, 
what are your words of wisdom to the person that's listening right now that that isn't sure they're on the fence if they should go get counseling or not? Well, first thing I would say is recognize that no man is an island. That's the first place. Understand that we need each other. Uh, in the book, I kind of talked about the African proverb um, that says when an animal uh, needs to scratch its back, it goes to the tree. However, when we human need to scratch our back, we go to fellow human being. So we all need it. Understand that you can't fight all your battles by yourself. Seek help. It's okay. Personally, I have done that. I have given so much help. I have mentored people. I have helped people and I have advised people. But also, there comes a time when I experience my own personal crisis and I recognize that I need help. Guess what? I seek it. Be it from my church leader or from a close friend uh, and things of that nature. And in the book, I talked about various support systems that you should have and you must have, and one of them is seeking professional counseling. It is okay. First, if you think maybe it's a mentor or a family member can really offer that help, which I always recommend, talk to someone first. If they can help you, then you need to seek professional counseling. When I was a professor at a university, you know, I deal with students every day, be it like grandmother just passed or some personal issues. I always talk to them. They come to my office. I give them much advice as I can. I can do, and then I refer them to the school counseling, um, uh, the school counselor. It is critical. So remember, no man or no person is an island. You need that help. You need support system. One of the support system you should have when you go through crisis is professional counselor. It is okay. They 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 are there to support you. That there to really carry you along until you can walk on your feet again. Uh, there we go. I had my mic muted for a second there. Uh, um, and and you know and that's um, that's good advice to um, to to people because um, we always seem to think we can handle it, but we really can't. No. Um, we always say, "Oh, I got this under control." No, you really don't. Um, you know, so we actually have to start to um, to 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 find a trusted person, and that's the key, a trusted person. Because a lot of times, too, why why we don't talk to people is because we don't want to go tell. Okay, I'm going to tell Nunzo, um, you know, um, that whatever the issue is, but then Nunzo is going to go tell his other friend, and say, oh well, don't tell him, don't tell anybody. I told you, and then that friend's going to go tell. Because the thing is, once you start telling other people. It's going to go around, and that's what that's what we really need to um to realize. We have to hold what someone tells us in confidence. Right. You know, the person's coming to you because they need help, not because they want to share the information. If they wanted to share, they'd post it on Facebook. Which, by the way, sometimes um sometimes that is also a cry for help, and we don't realize it. We see people posting things on Facebook, and we're like, why is this person telling all their business? Sometimes it's a cry for help. So when we see these things, pick up the phone, call your friend. Hey, don't text back on Facebook. Pick up the phone and call them. Hey, is everything okay? I see you made a post. You know, um, what's what's going on? Let's go grab a cup of coffee. Um, let's go to the cigar bar, sit down, grab a cigar, whatever. No matter how you got to do it, talk to the person. Let's this. And right now, with everyone cooped up in the house, it's depressing. We're getting into hurricane season. It's raining every day. It's depressing. You know, so we definitely have to become our brother's keeper, which is, you know, one of the things I always like to say, we are our brother's keeper. All right, All right so go, um, go ahead and give us a one minute wrap up because it's, um, it's time for us to wrap up now. Um, so go ahead and give me that one minute wrap up um, of, um, you know, talk, um, tell us about um, where they can get your book, different things of that sort, um, you know, go ahead. Absolutely. So again, thanks, uh, Steve. I do appreciate this opportunity. Uh, hey, look, this book, I'm telling you, will change your life. Prepare now. 10 Practical Guides to Surviving and Thriving During Crisis. Crises are inevitable. There's no doubt. It will come. 
It's just a matter of time. You can find this book on Amazon. Just type my name, uh, Nanto Opala. You can find it on Amazon. This book is also available on Barnes and Noble, to, uh, also on Kobo Book. Just simply type in my name, you will see the book. Or check out my uh, Facebook page or my Instagram or Twitter page. Uh, you can follow me there. Look, the, all I can say is do not wait until it is late. Even if you're going through a recession crisis now, just know one thing. It will happen again. It's just a matter of time and in various categories. It doesn't matter how you are right now financially. It just takes one incident to just turn things around. Remember, prepare now so that you can save yourself from the life ordering effect of recession, whether it's personal or global. All right, perfect. And, uh, and I mean, that's like, right on point we definitely have to prepare and like i keep telling people this is just uh a repeat of a hundred years ago we had a pandemic where it was um you know the spanish flu then we went into a recession then we went into the great depression i mean when you look at what's going on now prepare yourself, people prepare yourself i'm not saying go out there and stock up like it's armageddon that's not what i'm saying but i am saying put yourself in a position and um you know to be able to provide for you and your family for at least a couple of months after um after you know a recession or whatever hits we gotta we gotta make this happen so nunzo thank you very much for being on the show i mean i really appreciate it you um you brought a lot of great information um you know definitely um let me send me the link to your book and i'm going to post it on my website and this way people could come directly to the um to the lunchtime talk with steve website and they can they can you know just click on it and go right to amazon or barnes and nobles or whichever one and purchase it all right sure. um thank you very much i really appreciate you being on the show Thanks again. I appreciate it. I look forward to chatting with you soon. Okay, thanks. Sure. All right, guys. Um, so, I mean, we got you some great information from Nicole, from Nunzo, and from Jackie. All right. Um, but one of the things that you heard from all of them and that you always hear from people is definitely seek help. All right. Um, a lot of times I hear people say, oh, but I don't want people to know my business. Trust me, they're going to know your business later on after something happens. All right. And don't you don't have to go to a, um, to a family member or whoever. Go to your pastor. Go to um, go to um, uh, um, a counselor. Most of you, your jobs may even have that um, the, the um, employee. Oh, gosh, I can't remember what it's called now. But um, but speak to your HR um, representative and they'll have um, some kind of an employee program where you get like three or four counseling sessions for free based on your program go and talk to the people here's the thing i know a lot of you are thinking well i don't have any problems i don't really need to go talk to them it's just like your car or anything else you don't wait until it breaks down to go get a checkup get the checkup now because you may have issues and not realize it you may have issues and just think it's the norm because it's the way it's always been and that's the way my parents were and that's the way their parents were and their parents were well, all that does is create a generational curse. So find a way to break that generational curse by getting that checkup, finding out, um, you know, um, whatever it is that's going on is not normal, you know, or, or whatever, and, you know, but, but just talk to someone because we don't want to be talking about you later on and saying, oh man, I wish um, they said something that we can't do we can't undo we can't go back we can't do any of those things to um to change the past but we can change the future and we can change the present you can do it by talking to the right people as i said go to um to my website um lunchtime talk with steve.com you see the um the numbers or the information on there for suicide prevention you see the um the, inf the information for um for um, feeding America for 211 for the national um, for the missing and exploited children network and that's not just for children's for adults as well I always tell people go on there and check and see because you could be passing someone every day and not knowing that that person was kidnapped or they're being sex traffic or whatever you have the ability to help people all right pass on the information if you don't think it's for you you don't think that um that you um you have these issues 
pass it on, let your friends know, post it on your Facebook page, because you may have friends that are seriously depressed right now and you don't know it. Put it on your Facebook page, let them know that these resources are out there. All right, guys, um, as always, you know, I, I appreciate you. I appreciate you watching. Um, we'll be back again tomorrow with another great guest. All right, reach out to a friend, a relative, someone that you haven't spoken to in a long time and, and just say hi, because you never know what that one word may mean to that person. All right, go ahead and um, and help someone else. If if you see that um, they need help getting to the food bank, help them out, go give them a ride. If you can't give them a ride or if you don't wanna give them a ride, bring the food to them. But we definitely have to start reaching out. You are your brother's keeper. Go out and do a random act of kindness for a stranger because one day you will be that stranger that need that random act of kindness, all right? Let's just do this, let's make this happen. All right, guys, as always, um, you know, take care of yourself, take care of each other, and I'll see y'all tomorrow. Peace, people. Please visit lunchtimetalkwithsteve.com if you would like to be a guest or advertise on the show. If you're interested in any of the products or services you saw on the show today, or if you would like to be a guest on the show, please visit our website, lunchtimetalkwithsteve.com.